Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you two very good modifications that I made to this trap. Now, some of you may use this to trap wild animals to release in a different area away from your home. What I use this trap for is trapping, spaying, neutering, and releasing cats. I also use it to catch kittens so they can be fostered and you can find homes for them. Now, like most traps, this one has the lever at the back connected. The food goes way back there in the corner. You would set it right at the bottom. And as soon as the cat steps on that angled plate, it's going to trip the door and it will lock. Now the problem with this setup here, where the plate is at the end and the animal puts their weight on it and it releases the door and lets it fall down, in the event you're trying to catch kittens, you want to make sure all the kittens end up inside this cage. Because if one or two get in and then the other two are over here hanging out or over there, one or two, and the door closes, you're going to end up either hitting them with this door when it comes down or they're going to get away. And once they have a bad experience with a trap, they're going to have fear of that trap for a couple of days more than likely and you're not going to catch them. It's going to be that much harder to catch these animals so you can foster them and find them good homes. You also don't want to catch other animals when you're trying to catch a stray cat or kittens. So if I put this out and I see my cat walking by, I don't want my cat to end up in this cage, have it all freaked out, or even have a wild animal going here. So there's something else that I added to this that makes it so much better than just having the plate that you see. Now before I show you that, I want to show you another problem I discovered with this type of a trap. When the door swings down, you have these steel rings. All right, they go all the way down. Now normally, if you look right over here, these angled pieces I welded on. It's a 45 degree angle. It only sticks out about three quarters of an inch. This goes over it easily. But what I noticed, I caught a cat a couple of times without these pieces welded on. The cat freaked out, slammed on the door. And when it hit the door really fast, believe it or not, these rings popped all the way to the top and the door opened. So to eliminate the chance of this door opening, if an animal freaks out inside, you definitely want to add these little protrusions right here. When this drops down, it'll clear. And then when they hit the door, it's going to more than likely get hung up under this spot right here. If one doesn't get caught on that protrusion, you can bet that the other one will. So it's definitely going to keep the animal in the cage. Now what I wanted was a way to have this door trigger when I want it to trigger, not when the plate triggers. So if kittens happen to go in, I can watch from a distance, 100 feet away, 30, 35 meters, and just keep an eye to see when all the kittens enter. Or if I'm looking to catch a stray cat to have it fixed and released back into the community, what I would do is just wait for the cat to go in, make sure it's the cat that I want to catch. If it's a cat I don't want to catch, either I'll have the door go down before it goes in, or I'll just let it go in and eat and not have the door trigger. By not having the door trigger, the cat's happy, it walks out, and it doesn't freak out. So how I did that, right over here, you can see up close, I added a solenoid right over here. I added a contact lever, which is steel, and it's brazed onto the top of this cage. And I have this control box with a lithium polymer, 12 volt battery for RC along with a remote control triggering circuit. All I have to do, stay back at a distance, 100 feet, push the letter A when I want the door to close. Now if you take a look at the solenoid, you're going to see that there is a large O-ring going through the slit in that plunger. It goes around the solenoid. That's just to keep it fully retracted into the coil when you're using the other method of triggering. So right now it's set, if an animal walks in, steps on the plate, it will lock the door. In order to use the remote control, remove this O-ring, just slide it off the bottom. With the O-ring removed, the plunger now is free to work. Now the problem I've noticed with these solenoids is that there's excessive play in the bore. There's a lot of play in that bore. And what you wanna do is when you put this rod in, which you're going to braze or weld onto the door, Make sure the angle is correct. Comes in sideways right here. It's gonna make contact 
with the top, the very top edge of this plunger. So I'm gonna spin it around this way, I like it that way. You're gonna push this down. You wanna push it down most of the way. If you try triggering way out like this, you're going to have much less electromagnetic pull on this rod in the center, the plunger, and you're not gonna trigger the door, it's gonna do nothing. So you wanna make sure you push this down three quarters of the way and then engage the door. I also brushed on here some silicone grease and by doing that and ensuring that this is down the right distance in contact with that rod, this will trigger perfectly every time. Now this solenoid, I'll put a link in the video description area. I believe it is a 35 Newton, I think a 30 or 35, 12 volt. So I think it has around six or seven pounds of pulling force. You wanna make sure you use the same rating or even one that's slightly stronger. So instead of a 30, 35 Newton, you might want to go 40 to 50 range. Of course, it's going to draw more current. This one here is a 1.2 amp. If you're going to be using a 40 to 50 Newton, it's going to probably draw two to two and a half amps. And it's really not a big deal for the battery that's used in this control box. You're also only going to be triggering momentarily. It's not a constant load on the battery. So you could charge this battery using an RC charger, and this will last a very long time even on standby while you're waiting to trigger. So I'm gonna lift this up and you're gonna see the other rod fell down. So now I have to engage this. Just push down with my finger like that. But before you do that, you wanna turn this on first. It's gonna do one cycle, then reach in, put it right to the top. All I have to do now, push this button. And you can see there's a little delay. Just make sure you get it down as low as you can, but you need to leave enough room that when it does trigger, it'll be able to clear the rod on the door. Over here are quick connects, lever connects. I tested these on my channel. These are designed for 120 volt connections, AC wiring in your home. If I ever want to remove this, this is held on with Velcro. Just loosen it, slide the box out, release one side of the lever like that and do it on this one and I could take the box and separate it from the cage. Okay straight back in front of my fence just to the left of my orange tree is the trap the door is open facing to the left I'm about 75 feet away here we go let's give it a try and there it is the door is closed and it's locked really really useful to have I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of use out of it in the future. Before I open this up, I just want to explain that you can also use this circuit to control other things. So right here is a water valve. Connect this up, push the remote, and you can turn on a sprinkler or anything else using the remote control. You can also momentarily turn on compressed air if you purchase the right one for compressed air. Okay, this is all done. I'm going to place a link in the video description area to a schematic so you know exactly how to set this up and I'll also include where you can get the parts. So inside the project box is not much. You have this control board. You purchase it exactly the way you see right here. This was a damaged component. I believe it was a MOSFET. I don't have my glasses on to look closely but it was damaged and I replaced it. You program it with the remote using this button. And there's different outputs over here. It's hard to see because the wires are in front, but I'm going to get the pin out for each one of these and put it in the wiring diagram. And you can see there's a diode right here. I believe that's a 1N4003 rectifier. You wanna make sure you use a 1N4003 up to a 1N4007 because what's going to happen when this solenoid is triggered, it's going to hold for about two seconds and then it's going to release. When that magnetic field collapses, it's going to produce a high voltage spike. If you do not have this diode across the positive and negative output from this board, you can possibly damage or destroy this board. So always put, you can see the line right here. That's the cathode. And on the other side is the anode. Make sure the cathode is connected to the red wire, which is the positive leaving. 
and then you want the anode to go to the negative. In this case, it's white, and that's the negative for the solenoid. An RC LiPo battery, I believe it's a 12.6, well, 12.6 when it's fully charged. I think it's rated 10.8 or 11.1. You will not have to charge this for a very long time because if you're only using a 1.2 amp pulse for two seconds to trigger this, you could probably do it hundreds of times before you'd have to charge this battery. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.